case George from Cypress Insight and this week I'm recuperating from my operation there you are let me just say the health service over here in Cyprus is second to none I had a problem with my foot it was swelling up a few varicose veins a bit painful went to see the GP he referred me straight away and within three weeks the dodgy valve was operated on and so was the varicose veins. What a great service. Thank you to the health service. So guys, this gives me a great opportunity to show off my garden and give you a few tips. Right, let me start off here in the back where we've got this fantastic umbrella plant. Can you see? And I put that down here in a great big raised bed. Okay. I managed to pick that up from a garden centre that was closing down. And they had uh, this umbrella plant in a great big row. And I bought the whole lot. And at first I planted it on great big pots and then decided to make a trough and that's come up really well next to it is this fantastic figos I think it's called there it is I'll put that there on the side to make up the cover so this makes a fantastic bush so let's move on shall we so let's have a look at the figus tree oh look i think the crew's spotted a cactus i can't remember putting the cactus in there oh there he is that sort of cactus right so doesn't that make a great bush guys Right guys, there's another figus tree. Now I've got this on a giant pot here with some lovely succulents. There they are. It's just coming out of the big pot. And I'll show you on the next one how I managed to keep these plants well watered. So recently I made these troughs up. Can you see them? Metal troughs, they were just about 35 euros each from one of the local fabricators. So, what was happening, if you can see here on the concrete, it was getting discoloured due to these pots. So, I fabricated these troughs, put the pots in the trough and then filled them up with stones. Now when the water goes right to the bottom, there's a damp area at the bottom. So these plants will never dry out, especially in this heat. And I do know that you're not supposed to have roots in wet conditions. But it seems to be working really well. I took the chance and it's working really well. Right, let's move on. Right, let's go on to our next pot. So this is another giant pot. There it is. Okay. And here I used to have a conifer. Similar to that one in the corner. And what I did, I donated that to the cat sanctuary. And decided to put a climber here. And there it is. Not looking too clever, the flower on it at the moment. And that is called a boa vine. Okay. And there's one further down. I'll show you it in a minute. 
Okay. There's your boa vine. And there's the succulent in the pot. Is and I'll show you some more of that in a minute. And that gives you great cover there, so you don't get any weeds. And again, I've made the trough underneath, filled it up with stones that I picked up from the um, sculpture park or near the sculpture park. They were doing some digging there, so I just pulled the car up and picked up these stones. So that retains all the moisture. Right, our next pot, giant pot, you can see, again, our trough full of stones. We were given permission to take the stones from the guy digging up this field. Anyway, back to what we planted. We've got passion fruit here that also grows like mad. And I put bamboo against this green cover to give us a little privacy and that was about six months ago and you can see that we started to get some fruit and again in the pot i picked up some of this succulent really nice really nice flower now i'm not sure what this one's called but i picked it up from our walk at Brodara on our coastal walk. Same with the other succulents. I only picked up a couple bits of it and this is how it's come on. All right, there's some more of the uh, boa vine. There it is. And this is our second boa vine, one over there. And in between the passion fruit and then another boa vine in the giant pot. Okay. So one of our local farms keeps sheep and goats. And I picked up all the manure and what have you for the pots from them completely free. And it's really doing well with it. Right, that's an original conifer that I've moved from this area. So all these succulents were completely free, guys. Right, let's move on to a beautiful little fountain underneath this toothpick tree. There it is. It's made up with three different stones. One's hollowed out. It came like that. It was just... Uh, left on the side of a field so i picked it up same with these other stones and i combined them together to make a little fountain that's nice right so this is the bottle brush tree well that's what i call it anyway it grows really well out here and it has a beautiful flowers they come up at spring and hang around for about three or four months there it is right let's move on now this olive tree here has done really well look at the olives on it let me stand back and show you it now my auntie lives a little bit up the road she's got quite a few olive trees let me show you it there it is and uh she had two olive trees that were too close to together and I hired a JCB to take them out and I replanted them here. They weren't doing very well for the first year but they've come on leaps and bounds. There it is. Just underneath the olive tree is a geranium. There it is. Very popular out here. And that's come on really well. That was a cutting from one of my neighbours. There's the olives. Now I'm not sure which, what this plant's called. It's got a little blue flower. 
There it is. I don't think it's flowering at the moment, but it's doing really well. It's like a grass. It looks like a little cornflower when it's out. Right, so this tree here, guys, picked up from the garden centre about five years ago. I've no idea what it's called, if anyone knows. There's the seeds. All right, so there's your seed pods. And it's doing really well in between this figus tree and this orange tree here. Now they are a little bit close together, I agree. But I've been trimming them back and giving them a little bit of space. There we are. This is the first year we're going to have oranges on this tree. Right. Carry on round, shall we? This is the second olive tree that I acquired, replanted from my auntie's house. Looks like we've got a cat that's sunbathing at the moment, relaxing. Are you relaxing, Georgie? Yes, yeah, seems like it. Right, we've got a different olive tree here. Picked that up from a garden centre quite a few years ago. It's doing really well. These olives are much bigger. Right, one of my neighbours round the corner and a friend of mine, he donated some rosemary. There it is. And that's doing really well underneath the olive tree. Again, gets rid of all the weeds. Stops you having to weed everything. All right, Georgie. There's Georgie. Right, turning the corner, we've got a European palm. There it is. I've got that in a pot. It's basically, when it gets a bit too big, I'll uh, transplant it somewhere else. Moving round, a banana. Here we are. We did get some bananas, but they didn't ripen up this year. So we're hoping next year more success. And we'll go around here to the uh, jacuzzi area. And what I decided to do is get some bamboo from just around the corner. And it's very evasive. So what I did, I've got some pots or barrels, there they are. And I planted them in the barrels and there are no holes in them barrels whatsoever. So none of the roots can come out. And if you can have a look closely, you can see that the roots are bulging out, trying to get out. And as soon as those barrels split, the whole lot's going to be taken away. We don't want to end up with bamboo popping up all around the garden. Right, as you can see, coming from the front garden, I've planted some more of that beautiful boa vine. And it's slowly getting bigger and bigger. And so I've trained it to go up and around the balcony. You see? And I'm hoping by the end of the year it will go all the way around the balcony. It's a really beautiful plant. Right, all around the house guys, here, there's a little trough. There it is. And about uh, 15 centimetres left all around the house to stop the house becoming damp because most houses in Cyprus suffer from a bit of damp and I decided when we did the concreting here 
that the concrete touching the house is the reason for the damp so I did that made sure that the concrete on the garden didn't touch the house and sure enough it does work the house hasn't got any damp whatsoever anyway back to the garden and we've got some more succulent ground cover look at that that was picked up from uh, our coastal path walk right guys in the car park area i wanted a bit of shade i didn't really want to put up any sheets or anything like that or any tarpauling so i decided to plant another passion fruit so what i did i run some wire i'll show you there it is you can just about see it so i've run quite a bit of wire from the wall to the other side where I planted the passion fruit and within two years this is the result and every couple months I have to hack it back so I'll show you where I planted the passion fruit let's go around the corner right there it is that's the passion fruit going up and around the car park area so now we're at the front garden and what i did quite a few years ago i made a arch here from the front door to the front gate and I planted some more of this boa vine and it's done really well it's gone right around there okay so it's really lovely so this is another ground cover succulent guys and it's called aptonia I do believe and it grows all the way down along the floor covers the whole floor it hasn't covered that bit yet but it's working its way along and also it goes up there it is going up and it covers walls and sides of pots it's brilliant stuff i picked it up from our coastal path and it's gone mad now there is some more of it here look So that's a great plant if you don't want to weed your garden. Right, so we've got a lovely front garden, that area over there. But I won't go that way because I might trip there, see. And we're still recovering. Anyway, quite a few years ago I planted this rose bush and it's done really well. There it is. That's really nice. And what I did last year at lockdown a little bit bored so i went and picked up some bamboo from around the corner there it is it was growing wild and i made an arch out of bamboo and there we go and i trained the rose bush around it just going to show you the last project don't want to bore you guys i've got a little raised bed here at the front and when we were up on the mountains, I picked up some lovely cones. There you are. And the ground cover around here wasn't doing very well because of the shade. So I filled this raised bed up with the cones and that prevents the weeds from coming through. And it looks really nice. There you go. Right here at the front, guys, is a lemon tree. I have sprayed it recently. The leaves are not looking that clever on some of it, but the top's doing really well. Can you see how many lemons on there? Now, this is the first year that this lemon tree has got fruit on it. In the last three years, 
it picked up a disease. I'll just show you there. Can you see that one there on the left? That's the disease died away branch. And then we've got some new growth on our right. And thank God it's doing really well now. Look at that. Isn't that brilliant? Next to it is another rose bush. There it is. Not looking too clever at the moment, but it does come up really nice. And that's in a pot at the moment. There it is. Okay, it's got a little cross in it with an angel. Because we've got the uh, mother-in-law in there, or ashes. And the last but not least, we've got another orange tree here. And we had a few dozen oranges off that last year. And I think we might have the same this year. It's doing really well. In between is that boa vine. And that's doing really well. And as you can see, I've got it trained on a wire going round. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. A little walk round the garden. Thank you very much for your good wishes. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if there's somewhere you'd like me to go, put it in the comments below.